This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Perk, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Diggity dink. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another week of the Nightwing News. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is... Hello, I'm Kristen. That's right. We're doing, we're doing this a few... We're recording this a few days before Christmas, so... It'll go up on YouTube soon, but if you're listening on the podcast, welcome to 2021. Fancy Yay! <laughs> That's right. Podcasts will be the first episode of Nightwing News for 2021. All right, so before we get to uh, our issues tonight, uh, Action Comics Weekly issues, we're going to be covering. Uh, we got some news a few days ago. Uh, what's coming in March for Night the Nightwing ongoing series? Uh, well, first of all, we found out it's going to be from 78 forward. It's going to be written by Mr. Tom Taylor. Who, I think he's done some. Was he, is it injustice? Some of the injustice stuff. I know he's worked. Mm. He, he was doing mm-hmm. some Spider Man over at Marvel not too long ago. So I, I like his writing. And then the artist is going to be Bruno uh, Redondo, who I I'm not familiar with, but just the samples I saw look pretty pretty good. Yeah, for sure they did. Yep, and it looks like uh, Barbara is going to be somewhat regular in the Nightwing books, and Nightwing's getting a dog. A three-legged dog. That's right. Yeah, it sounds like maybe Batgirl's not going to have an ongoing, or at least they haven't announced it yet. What else have they announced? Mm. I mean, obviously Detective and Batman will keep going. Yeah, they announced Batman stuff, Superman stuff. Um, I forget who. I think there's going to be like a new team on Green Lantern, which may even be focusing on John Stewart instead of Hal Jordan now. Uh trying to remember if they announced all the teams yet i know they did flash stuff uh yeah i mean i'm pretty sure i can't remember who i'm pretty sure they announced that a harley quinn something's coming but yeah no background mm, is is jason's picking back up is his getting restarted or did his not get canceled red hood red hood um trying to remember i don't i'm not sure if they've announced yet okay so yeah well i Oh, guess we'll find out. Well, I wonder too, because I guess there there's gonna be like a new. I forget, is it monthly or every couple months? There's like a, gonna be a new Batman family. Like, what's it called? It's like it's gonna be like an anthology book. So it's gonna be like you know, like a thicker size. You know, kind of like the old Batman family, I guess. Oh, okay. So wonder, and now is it supposed to be new or is it reprints? No, I think it's new stuff. So I wonder if like okay. people like Jason and Barbara are gonna be showing up over there too, maybe. Mm-hmm. What's it called? Do you remember? Oh, I'm trying to remember. Um, let me bring it up. I didn't see it, but obviously, I love me some Batman family, so I'd be all about that. Oh yeah. Um, let's see. Search Batman March 2021. Uh, yeah, because they had a whole thing about all this stuff. Uh, we got. Come on, load already. <laughs> Or is that one going to be difficult? Uh, oh, we also got, they also announced that there's going to be a Joker solo series starting in March. Wow. I don't think Joker's had his own book since the seventies. I know. And I love how they're like, yeah, now the Joker's going to be the most wanted man in the world. And I, I saw everybody online was like, he, he's not, he, he hasn't been so far yeah, as opposed to who else? Like what? Um, okay. I believe the name of the book is Batman urban legends. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so. Did it say if it was monthly? I'm looking. I thought they said maybe monthly. Um, but yeah, the more article I'm looking at, they pretty much announced everything bad, so. Kind of so, it's, so it's Batman, Detective, Harley, Joker, Nightwing, Batman, Urban Legends. Yeah. Did they say anything else? Um, I'm not seeing anything else. That might be it. Oh, did you see, uh, did you see that did you see like that big picture of like all the characters? Oh, I think Catwoman might still. Um, is Catwoman still going? But did you? See yeah, that? yeah. Isn't that supposed to come out in the Detective or something, or the Batman one that's coming out soon? Oh, the like da- one of the Damian or something. 
Oh yeah, um, Damien's gonna be a backup. Was it in Detective? Maybe. But um, no. Did you did you see the, the new suit Damien's wearing? It's like a black and gray suit, and it's I don't know. Yeah, somebody commented on Damien in his pirate shirt. Yes, Charlie Esser. He was like, yeah. Yeah, but- I did see that. Yeah. Well, wait, is that for that book? Or I thought that was supposed to be like the cover of Batman 106 or 105 or I guess that's going to be his costume going forward because he's not Robin, so. Interesting. Yeah, because Tim's supposed to be Robin. Has that officially... That has happened. Has he appeared? I'm pretty sure because like I said... Well, I guess he, wait, is he one of the... He's one of the people that was... I just read it. He's one of the people that's captured... In that Batman issue, isn't he? Or is um, yeah. But I, again, remember some of the stuff we uh, like were reading. It seemed like it was supposed to be Damien, then they just changed it to Tim. So I guess unofficially, it's uh okay. Here we go. I found the Batman Urban Legends stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a monthly anthology series that will feature a roster of creative teams taking on stories set in Gotham City. The first six issues of Batman Urban Legends will be anchored by a Batman Red hood story Ooh. oh by chip zadarsky oh my god he's writing such good daredevil right now over at marvel that should be good yeah he writes some good stuff uh yeah uh red hood will be investigating a new and lethal drug sweeping through gotham city in the course of one night this investigation will change his life forever and put him in batman's crosshairs oh snap and that character i'm i'm not too familiar grifter i'm just like who cares uh it's Oh, and then they'll have a they'll have a Harley Quinn story in the anthology, but it's set before the new ongoing Harley Quinn series. Yes, there is a new Har- Harley Quinn ongoing coming. So, I usually don't get the Harley. We usually don't get the Harley Quinns. So. I was out of it for a while, but I got I picked up like the tail end of this last series, so I'm probably gonna get, at least give it a try. Oh boy, Batman Urban Legends will be released in prestige format uh, series and will retail for seven ninety nine. Uh, it's gonna be big. Dang it! It's gonna be big. <laughs> gonna be big in page count and price people <sighs> hate um, it when they do that <laughs> yes and the first issue will uh, release march 16th which i believe is also the same week nightwing comes out all right so yep so yeah so i don't know if, what it red hood so it sounds like they're paring the books down the books down though overall across dc i mean i assume they're gonna have a justice league are they announced are they having a teen titans book um. Yeah, I think they're doing like Titans Academy. So I don't know if it's gonna be every issue, but it sounds like so, like the original Titans are gonna be teaching some of the kids. So I don't know if like Dick's gonna be in and out of that book too. Oh, I wonder if it. I wonder if it'll be like when Jeff Johns revived Teen Titans. Remember, Maybe. or when he after they switched from yeah. Titans Young Justice to Outsiders, and it was like Corey and yeah stuff. But it's so- It sounds like what um. They were doing a few years ago over at Marvel with Avengers Academy. It's, yeah, it's going to be like them teaching the younger, the next generation of heroes and stuff. Sounds like it has potential. Yeah. I can't wait for that Nightwing. Like I said, story looks good. Art looks good. For sure. And I was reading Batgirl. So, hey, added bonus, Batgirl. Who they said Barbara will be probably going back and forth between being Batgirl and Oracle. So, Which is cool. The only thing that makes me a little bit sad about that is not necessarily that um well part of the reason that people like oracle so much is it was something different yes and you know she was in a wheelchair but still kicking butt and taking names and that was really important because i there's no I mean, I guess Professor X, but I don't think DC, but he's in Marvel. I don't think DC has any other heroes in a wheelchair. I don't think any high, pro- yeah, no. I'm, I mean, and certainly they don't have anybody as high profile as Oracle. So that's kind of the bummer that they really, they took, they took something away that made her special on a number of levels because a lot of, there's plenty of capes that can kick butt. Yeah. And there's plenty of people who are really good with computers, but, Someone who was a smart and awesome and didn't let her limited mobility, because people would think, well, how can you be a hero if you can't walk? Eh, wrong. You can't be. Exactly. Uh, so that was something that really made her, that really made her special. They, yeah, they had to reboot everything, you know, all these classic characters during New 52. I was, I was all afraid when they announced New 52 that they were going to make Dick Robin again, but. Nah, they have too many. Uh, oh, yeah. They have. 
They couldn't reboot it all that way because they have too many intellectual properties now, and they... I mean, you make more you make more money off stuff like Nightwing t-shirts and Nightwing face masks and Nightwing banks uh, than you do off of Nightwing comics. So be, I think they could be doing more merchandise with Nightwing. I don't know what they're waiting for. Well, like I said, it, it's sad, but also just think of it as being good for your savings, Bill. True. True. Fewer Nightwing items on the market means you can retire earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I am Connor from the House of L. And I am Ray from the House of Zod. We are two of the many, many survivors of Krypton's destruction, and we have made our home in Australia, and dare I say have become Australians, for better or worse. But we have also decided to read Superman comics, I read Superman books, watch Superman shows, cartoons, movies, basically everything Superman, and from an Australian perspective as well. Whether you're a seasoned fan, like me, or whether you are coming in fresh, wide-eyed, and wanting to learn more like me, then this podcast is for you. Join us for our bi-weekly adventures available on all good podcast catches. So just search for Last Sons of Krypton, a Superman podcast. We'll be coming to you from Australia or some cosmic dimension, wherever we are that week. Up, 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 up and, and away! away. All right, so should we get to the issues tonight? Yes, yes. All right, I have synopsis. Here's what they look like in it's a nice fat stack because wow. this, in fact, is an anthology book as well. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, I'm read. Oh, I bought the uh, the collection on uh, DC because DC Universe didn't have all the issues, so I had to go on Kindle and get the uh, trade uh, the collection, which was called. Uh, Old old friends, new enemies. Yep, uh, it's a pretty good one, though. Yes, so we're gonna be covering the issues we're covering are uh, well, the Nightwing stories from Action Comics Weekly six thirteen through six eighteen, uh, August through September nineteen eighty eight, and uh, issues six twenty seven through six thirty four from November uh, nineteen eighty eight through January nineteen eighty nine. Yep, and that's also a Nightwing and Speedy. Actually, they're both Nightwing and Speedy stories, but the first one is billed just as Nightwing, and then the second one's billed as Nightwing and Speedy. Well, and it's kind of a lot, so I feel like we can't go, like, through each one, but some of them are, there's not as much to go through, because actually in the second story, there's a couple of weekly issues that are just Speedy. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, yeah, because I, I think, yeah, he got the billing, because there was a lot more uh, Speedy solo stuff in that second story. In the second one, yeah. I think the first one is much better. I shouldn't say much better. The first one, the first one's better than the second one. Here's the cover. Here's the cover of the first one, which I think might be the cover of the trade. Yeah, or something. Yeah, similar to that. It, it's it's so a lot, it's, it's a lot more Nightwing centric too. So of course we're gonna. It's a lot that. more Nightwing centric. Well, and I think that the first one was written all by Marv Wolfman, and the second one, he helped plot it, but someone else uh, wrote it. Oh, yeah. And this is really Marv Wolfman in his prime. Oh, yeah. Uh, when Marv Wolfman was writing New Teen Titans, he was amazing. And, I mean, I'm sure he's done plenty of other amazing things, but when he came back and they had him write that kind of weird storyline in Nightwing, where oh, it was yeah. like, that was... That was not classic Marv Wolfman. That was, and I don't know if he came up with that idea or if they were like, Marv, we need you to come up with yet another story where Dick is being sexually violated. Why are there so many stories like this? Um, but <laughs> that's what they had him do. But man, Marv Wolfman in the 80s was on fire. Yes, exactly. Because <laughs> um, right at the tail end of New Titans, there's some stuff that happens to Dick like, being raved by uh, Mirage that's not so fantastic, but this stuff, it's great. It's yeah. perfection. I was going um, to say, I don't know about all of these, but some of them I have quick synopsis for each issue. Like, uh, yeah, the first one, uh, 613, uh, the Cheshire Contract. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's worth, go worth going through the first one in more yeah. detail than the second. Yeah. Than the second we'll do some setup. Uh, yeah. Because there's a couple of... Depending on the little corners of the internet where you lurk, there's a couple famous panels in the oh, yes. uh, 
in the first one um, that are well, the first two, I think, in particular. Um, so, yeah, we've got what? starts out Nightwing busting up some drugs, I think. Or no, cigarettes. Cigarettes. Well, and yeah. then he... Well, yeah, because I was going to say, I have a quick paragraph here. Uh, yeah, it's because it says, yeah. New York City, Nightwing rounds up a group of smugglers with the timely assistance of friend and fellow Titan Speedy. Later at Titan's Tower, Speedy tells Dick the Central Bureau of Investigation needs his help to track down Chejire, the mother of Speedy's child, who has been hired to kill some ambassadors and stop a treaty between the U.S. and Russia. Dick wants to call in his fellow Titans, but the Bowman states that he can't, that it has to be just Nightwing. The pair fly to Washington, D.C. and meet with a man who tells them the first hit is in London. In England, Cheshire takes aim at her target, but sees Speedy and Nightwing before she can pull the trigger. To herself, the killer says the Bowman has got in her way long enough, and even though he may be the father of her daughter, that won't save him now. Yep. Uh... So that's a good, it lays it all out. I just wanted to point out, as I said, in, depending on where you hang out in the, in, in the internet, there's some famous panels from this. Namely, we have this, namely we have some beefcake where Dick's taking a shower while Speedy sits around outside his room. And then I super duper, this cracks me up, but I super duper love Dick getting his Nightwing costume out of the washing machine. I know. <laughs> I just think that's so. I just think that's so funny. And even his uh, even his robe is like the same blue as his. I know, costume. and he has his, and he has like official Titans bathrobe. Yes, um, which I also love. And also, why does DC not sell that? <laughs> I know. I think another missed branding opportunity: official Teen Titans bathrobes, um, and his hilarious little white slippers. Uh, I love it. Uh, but the Central Bureau of Investigation, I'm assuming that's a cross between the CIA and FBI. Yeah, or just so they don't get in trouble yes. with government. Also, I love his outfit that really kind of harkens back to both what Burt Ward wore and looks forward to the outfit that, although it's a sweater vest oh, in yeah. Batman the Animated Series. <laughs> so, yes. That's that's the highlights for that one. I think it's number two. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta find it in here. Yeah, it's, it was kind of hard for me to tell the difference between uh, some of the issues. Well, I, I go if I read through it, I can, t- I can pretty much tell. But it, yeah, I mean, in the, in the, well, it's, yeah, the second one starts when they pop up in London. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the trade is kind of, uh, oh, well, that's the title. But yeah, they don't show all the, all the covers because. Since there was multiple stories in each Action Comics Weekly, you know, Nightwing. Yeah, and Speedy most of the co- most of the covers are not Nightwing and Speedy. Actually. Yeah, because a lot it's of just the, it's just the first and the last one on this one, which this is a pretty sweet yeah. cover too. Because like a lot of the issues have like Green Lantern and Superman in them, and uh, well, this one has Wild. One of them has Wild Dog on it. Yeah, uh, Phantom Stranger looks like a Catwoman story in this one. Yeah, Black Canary. Yeah, so. You, they were little, little, little. Uh, what, did, what did it say? Oh yeah, forty-eight pages every week. So you got a bunch of like uh, short stories, like we said, with all these characters in them. Yeah. But the only we care about is Nightwing. Yeah. So then, this is part of why I had to read it because depending on the parts where you go on Tumblr, this panel is really famous, and it's the panel where um, Roy is talking about how he met Jade. When he was on a CBI assignment in Japan, okay. and he says, I wasn't in love, but it was lust. And then he found out later it was a kid. And Dick says, I gotta be honest, Roy, I could have made love to someone I didn't really love. And then Roy says, different strokes, pal. You'll probably go to heaven while I'll sport a perpetual tan. Um, and at that panel, like a lot of people who don't like that Dick has become, I would say since the 90s when he when he moved out of the Titans and into his own book, there's been, he's had more sexual partners than he had in all the years before that. There's some people that are like, look, look at this panel. He shouldn't be having all these girlfriends. And you're like, well, that was like back in the eighties. And I I think it's kind of a change. I think it's kind of a changing reflection of, um, I mean, I think the comics code is over by this point, but I think it's kind of a reflection of, 
our society and how, because, you know, it was a big deal when there's that one issue where Dick and Corey are in bed together. Like, they're just literally in bed together yeah. sleeping. Um, and I think... I think as you, I think it's a couple things. I think as we moved into the 90s and 2000s, people will become way, way more chill um, with premarital sex and, and, casual, and casual sex. Not to say that people weren't, I mean, certainly they were more chill with it in the 80s than they were in the 50s. Um, I mean, with talking about it, people have always been chill with having it. Um, but talking, talking about it, but I kind of wonder if it's also a function of how, I mean, since Corey, Dick hasn't been in a book, in a, like, he's mostly been in solo books, and so it's kind of a different dynamic, because I think I've said before that, I think in terms, I mean, not that it really matters, it's not like these people are real, but if I had to pick, I would put Dick with Barbara, most partially because I like Dick being particularly involved with the Batman family and hanging out with Batman. And I think it just makes more sense if he's more of a bat to be with Barbara because it's easier with the secret identity and all that kind of stuff. But I really do think that his relationship with Corey was better written. Um, and maybe better written's not, not quite what I'm looking for, but it was... I don't know, it just didn't seem as, I mean, there are plenty of pieces of drama, but also in here, in this story, later on, there's times when he's just like, oh, Corey, I love you so much, and they just talk on the phone, and it's just like happy chat, and they just like hold hands while they're walking out of the airport, and that's it, and it's just kind of chill, and not always like so intense, and, and dramatic, and I feel like since he's had his own solo series, it's like up to the, up the ante- I don't know. I just kind of wonder if it's a function of him dating someone who's on his team and then both being major characters and being written by the same author that makes it more of a... Because it's more of the kind of relationship I think you would want to be in because they show them just hanging out. Whereas some of the times when he was in his relationship with Barbara, we have a few issues where it's really calm and stuff. But then we also have tons of issues where it's like... We're on a date, and then someone comes along and beats us up. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think the whole thing with uh, Corey is, I think there was a, they were together for a longer stretch of time, so Marv was able to flesh that out more, and again, it was one writer, whereas with Barbara, mm -hmm. I think that they're always like on again, off again, or there's something going on, and they're... You know, by the time we get to like the, you know, like the early 2000s, there was how many different writers trying to write those two? Right. Now, I just think you can definitely notice a difference in how they write and how they write the really and how they write the relationship in it and maybe it's just a function of of the 80s as well but yeah i just think i liked it better with barbara but if i were going to say the way it's depicted in the comics the relationship with Corey, there are more of those just kind of like casual Hey, we're just hanging out moments that I feel like it's more what you would want in your relationship than, oh, here we go. Let's save Gotham City I'm, again. I mean, I think you can make a case for most of them that he was, even if it was just on a smaller level, he was in love or thought he was in love with most of them. But like there are certain ones like who was that that fashion designer Cheyenne or whatever that was supposed to be Jason in the book. Remember, that's when they were going to kill Dick off. But then they decided not to do it. Yeah. Like that was just them turning around and say, okay, no, 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 it's still Dick. But it, you know, the whole, that storyline was written for Jason. That's why that whole thing went down. And then Jason got turned into a tentacle mob. That storyline really did not work for anyone. No, 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 no. Again, because they had to change everything. Yeah. 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 And so, and that isn't necessarily, um, yeah, yeah. So I think you've got some more of this kind of stuff, different, more different, more writers doing different things. But I don't know. I also just think that maybe because it was so long-term, that there are times in their relationship when they're just depicted as, like, being chill and calm, and it just, it's, I don't know, it seems like it got a chance to be fleshed out better into this, the kind of, like, fun, not dramatic aspects of their rela of their relationship, and you don't get to see as many of those with the other, with the other people he dates, because he's, not, I mean, he was technically with Corey in over ten real people years oh yeah which is, yeah which is a long time uh so yeah 
and it, like you said, again, it's not bad. You know, she wasn't bad family, and you know, it was probably different than anything he had known up at that point. You know, because Barbara is so much like him and Batman. Mm-hmm. And again, yeah, one writer for like ten for like ten years. You know, so of course he had time to really flesh out their relationship too. Yeah, I just yeah, I just think it's better. It's better presented um, in in the comics, and maybe it's just because of what I look for. But there are definitely way more. Oh, that's cute. Um, mo- moments. <laughs> okay, but okay, but enough with the, the with the, with the female relationships. Okay, because I point- know because that's actually not the point. But anyway, say- I just kind of when I reread this, I was like, oh yeah, that's kind of a famous yeah. panel that people pop yeah. around on the internet a lot. And then, but some other stuff reminded me. But I was going to say, it. I was going to say, since the focus is him and Speedy, what did what did you think about the interplay between him and Speedy? It was fun. Mm-hmm. Where's the one where he says we're alike? But was that in the first one? Did what? we skip over that? He says something about we're a lot alike, but we're also a lot different. Oh yeah, I forget where that's at. Because yeah, I, I mean, but because it, it's kind of hard to tell who's talking because you can't see them; you just see the yeah. bubbles. But one thing I thought was interesting was um, because, like, yeah, I'm more quiet, and you are much more extroverted, which is very interesting. Because I think you know a lot of times, of course, when we're with the when you read Bat Family books, it gets portrayed as, you know, way, way, ex- way, way extra, or, you know, he's extroverted for a bat, I guess, but, yeah, I mean, someone like Speedy, he's much more extroverted than, uh, Yeah, it's kind of hard. To, it's kind of hard to remember because I read this whole collection like one, you know, in, at one time, so it all kind of blurs together for me. But also, let's just pause for a minute to appreciate, uh, Roy and Jade's amazing '80s leather outfits. Oh yeah, yeah it was '88. Yeah. That's some qual- that's some quality stuff right there. And their hair. Oh yeah, yeah. That's he's got he's got that orange mullet going on. Oh yeah, that's that's some quality stuff right there. That is classic '80s. Classic. All right. Now let me find it. Oh, you know what else is sad? You probably didn't see this because, well, I assume they don't have the uh, advertisements in there. But all throughout this whole thing were the ace advertisements for Jason, what ultimately kills Jason. And that was kind of sad. Death, death in the family. Oh, that's right. Oh, so, all right, this drops in January. Stay tuned, kids, because Lilith and I are going to be covering that, too. So Yeah. So, all right, then the third one. Uh, Dick is chatting it up. He's on his sweet new motorcycle. Tracks of a killer. Yep, he's tracking. Well, he's tracking Roy while Roy is is tracking Jade. Uh, yeah. Essentially, oh yes, and then we get the big reveal because Roy was like, "You can't tell the Titans," but Dick is like, "Something's going on," so he calls the Titans, and then Danny reveals Roy doesn't work for the CBI anymore. Yeah, he got fired, <laughs> got fired like two months ago. That's right, and that ends us on a cliffhanger. <laughs> yep. So he's like, this is something else. Something personal. Then we get Roy there. See, again, another advertisement for... <laughs> But I love him, like, skulking in the shadows. Meanwhile, he's wearing, like, that red and yellow costume. It's like, okay. Right, well, and then he walks too loudly. Sorry, okay, so this is Dick. Um, yeah, come here. This is Dick tracking down uh, Speedy. Then he busts in to stop the fight with Jade. And we get another intense cliffhanger. Looks like Jade's about to scratch Nightwing with her poisonous claws. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they literally, they're, like, fighting in a bar. Yeah. No, I think they're fighting at her house. Or is that the house? Because I know he was looking for information in a bar. Did she... Yeah, he was at the bar, but now he's at her house. He puts a little thing on her. Yeah, see, he's at her, well... Oh, no, you're right. He is still at the bar. Yeah, because she comes, she comes barging in. He comes he's... in the bar, right, and then she jumps in her car. Yeah, okay, he track, He put the tracking device on her at the bar. Then they follow her in a motorcycle. And... Oh, well, he, 
Mm. Yeah, because he looks like he's retreating, so she jumps in her car and leaves. Yeah, and he, then he's in the helicopter with the uh, guy from Scotland Yard. Yeah, so she yep. doesn't see them. Because yeah, he, and then, yeah, once he tracks them, he comes crashing in the window to save Speedy. And then Cheshire scratches Roy a bit and leaves. And what does she leave behind? Leon. Yeah. Is that how you pronounce that? I think so. It's funny. Right. It's funny here because it's like she has, you know, Roy's red hair, but like in every like modern story I remember, it's like she she had dark hair like her mother. Yeah, I think then later they were like, "Oh, maybe she would probably really have dark hair." So that's what they did. All right, Roy, he's okay. Woo! And yep. now he gets to be with the end. Oh uh, yeah, look at look at that uh that splash page of the, you know with a uh, Nightwing holding Leanne. Oh, I know it's cute. Aww. Dick Dick can charm any woman, no matter how young or old she is. Yeah, I want Roy can charm Aww. Leanne too. She's pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh, but I love when uh, Dick tracks down uh, Jade and has the gun in his hand. Yes. He tracks her down to Big Ben again. We're coming full circle right back where it all started. And she's like, I'll detonate it. He's like, And she's like, you don't, no, think, don't, you don't, do you don't think I'm stupid enough to think that you're actually going to shoot me? And he's like, yeah, because she must have said something about him being like Batman. He's like, no, I'm not like Batman. He's like, I don't have a fear of guns. And yeah. Get, I get that panel of him shooting her, but then it, he's he still used uh, anesthetic darts. So, yeah, but yeah, she's like, "You shot me!" I was like, "It's an aesthetic dart." I just, I just like, yeah, you were right. I there just, has to be a difference between us. It can be narrowed, but never lost, never. I mean, it was dramatic. I liked it. It set us some apart from Batman. But all I heard was like Doctor Evil from Austin Powers. Ow, you shot me, you a hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's lucky that. Um, she didn't put it because it's like, yeah, of course he's. I mean, that's the thing. It's like obvious. I mean, even when they did that, I'm like, yeah, he's obviously gonna shoot her with like a rubber bullet or a wooden bullet or a dart or something. Like, duh. I mean, I guess they want that split second of, oh, did he? He actually did it. Well, I mean, I guess it gives her pause just for a second to you know throw some throw some villain monologuing at him. Then that gives you time to. Yeah. Uh, so that so that's good. Then of course, look at that ridiculous outfit that they have Leon in at the end with that weird thing on her head. <laughs> I know she she looks like a baby doll. I know. I know. It's not that weird thing on her head. Um, yeah, like you said, Dick goes home and then Corey meets him at the airport. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like that's some of the cute stuff that they have. She's just like you know. Cause, you know, again, although that guy at the back, that guy, hilarious dude in the background, that random, air, random other passenger who's seen them kiss, and he's like, hey, hey. and then well, he's like, that, that I think is the. Well, maybe that guy recognized Corey too, because wasn't she like modeling or something? Yeah, she was point? a famous model. Yeah, that's pretty. And I like how Dick says he used to envy me because he thought I was so together. I used to envy him because he was so open and carefree. How little we know about even our closest friends. But there's something I do know, Corey. Coming home to you was very important to me. Being with someone you love, with someone you trust, is really all that's important. Coriander, I love you. I really do love you. Like, aww. That's so cute. Aww. Isn't it? Then, then I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Then, I don't know, they were more open about, I don't know, maybe they thought, maybe the target audience of the Teen Titans stuff was more yeah. into that kind of thing. I don't know, but... That was good stuff there. But yeah, I like we said, I, re I really like this. Yeah, that was the first story. I like that one uh, better than the second one. I mean, the second one wasn't bad, but this one was more Nightwing-centric. I like the art in this first one, too, but better. The other thing is the first one was simpler. Because I will admit, I know a fair amount about the Troubles in Northern Ireland, but they use made-up groups and it was sometimes confusing because there's, like, the pro-free Northern Ireland, and there's the pro-British side, and then there's these drug dealers, and then there's the corrupt C CBI and um, British Lord guy. And I really feel like that was actually not entirely... Yeah, I don't think they... they I don't think... 
I don't think they explained it at all. It was just like no, oh. they did not. It was just like two sides are fighting. Oh, they're bad. Oh, well, you're traitors. You're bad. And it's like they never really go into like why these two sides are fighting or. But well, I mean the two the two sides are fighting. I assume because it's over. Should Northern Ireland remain part of the UK oh, yeah, or yeah, should yeah. Northern Ireland? Yeah, but since it's made up groups and they're kind of trying, I feel like they're deliberately trying not to explain it too much so that they I don't know won't offend anybody. And then like how I mean I guess the if, CBI if, guy and Lord Danvers were just trying to make money yeah. dealing drugs and we're somehow funneling it through. But right. yeah, it was, they didn't I think that was my main problem with the second one. Was, it was very convoluted. I don't know if it was like, is is a product of its time, late eighties, you were supposed to know what's going on over there. Like I'm saying, like if some like if a kid picks this up today and doesn't know about, you know, Ireland, I don't think you're going to be lost. You're going to be like, I don't know why they're fighting. They're just fighting. You know, you're going to be like, which side is the bad guys? Wait, I don't, I don't. Right. And I guess maybe they're trying to say they're both bad because they're both killing people, but yeah. that's fine. I can get behind that. But then it's like the true villains were the, like, shoot, the guy whose name, Lord Danvers, and then the American guy, Sepulveda, maybe? Um, I, I have to go back and look for it. And they were the real bad guys. Yeah. But that was tied up really quickly right at the end. They were like, oh, yeah, it's that guy. Boom. Okay, done. Yeah. Like, wait, what? <laughs> and then, like we said, it was, it was uh, yeah, Marv Wolfman and then uh, Cherry Wilkerson, who I'm not familiar with. Uh, so, Cherry. Yeah, Cherry. I feel like the problem with that one, with this one, was they had too many irons in the fire, and then they didn't fully explain them all. They just kind of wrapped it up quick. Because when I got to the la- the penultimate one, I was like, uh, am I missing an issue? How is this going to get wrapped up in one more? And then it was wrapped up, and I thought... Well, it's weird, because, like, the whole thing is, you know, it, it opens up with, like, you know, Roy and Dick on this ship, and uh, Roy's going to, uh, yeah, like, his ancestral yeah. home in Ireland. Yeah, and it's... And we build, we build, we build, and then uh, is it the penultimate issue, I think? It's, like, all of a sudden, like, he leaves the... He, like, leaves, and it's, like... Yeah, it's resolved real... It's resolved really fast. The first couple yeah. issues ha- set a certain pace, then, like, the last... Like, between that one... Like, you know, the one part and the penultimate, it... The pace all of yeah. a sudden just goes... Woo! And it's, like... Yeah, wait, wait. I think that was the thing, was as long as it... Like, maybe they were... I don't know, were they planning on it being longer and it got maybe. cut, or else they needed to, like, simplify some of it. But, yeah, it's too much for too short. Yeah, it really felt like... Yeah. Because I don't know, like Detective, uh, Detective Action Comics Weekly. I don't know if, how long it was if they uh, had planned for it to go as long as it did. Because I think it only went to six forty two or something. But I don't know if they planned for it to go longer. Maybe they were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, you guys got to wrap everything up by you know six forty two or forty three. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, here we've got some other stuff like. Dick says, I know my roots back for many generations. Circus performers, acrobats, clowns. The Graysons go all the way back to 18th century England. So some other stuff, just like Leon's hair color that's been retconned and retconned and played with. Yeah, again, <laughs> I, again Marv Wolfman sets stuff up. And then once Dick goes back to the back family, they I guess they retcon stuff that doesn't, you know, fit their thing. Well, I mean, it's not to say that you can't, you know, be Romani. I mean, Romani people live in England, so it kind of works. It's just... Interesting how they just kind of like do some generic stuff. Although, actually, isn't it in the second one where for people who don't know, they have like a recap of, or is that the first one? Right. They have a recap of Roy's like, you got fired. And he's like, I didn't get fired. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That might be the first one, actually. Yeah, because this is only like two years after the end of Crisis on Infinite Earths. A lot of. In this period, a lot of times people don't even know what what's canon and what's not. So, because doesn't he say here? Doesn't he go with the the pre crisis uh, thing where it's like, oh, he gave Jason the suit and stuff? Yeah, it's kind of well, because which is the one that um, Marv Marv wrote. He kind of tries to. All right, maybe it isn't the maybe it isn't the second one. Yeah, but like that for that that first like year or two after Crisis, yeah, like they scrambled so much. Even in the Bat books, it's like they. They were didn't know what was canon, and they were just kind of like flying by the. Yeah, I pants. thought it was kind of interesting because they're kind of trying to explain it uh, both ways. I yeah. th- both ways, I think. Yeah, where the heck was that? I don't know if they were just trying to settle on the canon. Was that the first? Yeah, I think he was like, he's like Batman fired you. He's like he didn't fire me. 
I quit. Yeah, I think they were. He was kind of trying to be generic and trying to like he could go with either origin because I don't know if they, at this point they knew yeah which one was going to stick. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, eventually, yeah, I mean, but yeah, in the, in the first issue of this part, they're like, uh, uh, yeah, in 627, they're on the boat, and then stuff are, is already going down on the boat and in the water, so eventually Dick's like, oh, I'm going to, you know, he leaves the go to, um, he heads back to the United States, and then Roy continu- continues his trip to the ancestral home after someone tries to kidnap Leanne. Of course. I know, Leanne gets kidnapped so many times in this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I think the third, the third part and the fourth part and possibly the fifth part are all just Roy. Yeah, yeah, because he if after the whole adventure on the train, he makes it to the ancestral home, and there's two orphaned girls living there. Yeah, yeah, and he saves them, Moira and Button. And then, yeah, and then you start getting some of the background where you know that there's the foes and the Santas and they're supposed to be different groups in Northern Ireland and they've hurt the girls. And But this hunter guy at first, that, you know, f- for for a little while at first, I was like, wait, is this going to be like Dick in Disguise or something? Because like, they seem to be doing a lot of this guy and like Dick's nowhere to be found. I'm like, are we... <laughs> But right, then, yeah. But then after but then a while, it's like, no. Dick shows back up. I know, Dick just, like, shows back up. <laughs> he's dra- he's riding in the car with uh, Roy and the girls, yeah. And then Roy's driving, so Dick has to pick up the bow and arrow. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, it, like, it's those ones that are just Roy. Yeah. Where, I mean, it's cool and Roy looks good, but there was, like, lots of complicated stuff that I didn't totally... Uh, totally understand. Uh, or that isn't completely, uh... And then, is it this issue? Yeah, like, six... Is this, yeah, 630... This is 632, I think. Yeah, like, why, when, uh, the one girl's in the hospital and her little si- and her little sister buttons with her and stuff. Like, Dick and Roy are in the hospital. I'm like, where's Leanne at? Right, yeah! And so, I guess she's supposed to be with that woman... Um, oh, yeah, I guess. Mrs. Sebastian, I think, but, but it, yeah. That wasn't Mrs. Sebastian in the hospital, though? Because she's there with the other two girls. I'm like, where's Leanne at? Right, yeah. Uh, yes, that was, yeah, because I was kind of like, oh, hey, did she get, uh, did she get kidnapped? I but mean, apparently, I kidnapped I, again. I mean, I guess with these short stories, they don't have a lot of extra pages for, you know, it's like, we, you got to get to the point. Yeah. But, yeah, it's kind of funny. But, yeah, this second story, yeah, each issue is uh, credited Nightwing and Speedy. Yep. But, yeah, where's, uh... Oh, yeah, when they fly into Washington, D.C., and then, like, they get picked up, uh... Was that by the CBI? Yeah by that Sepulveda or whatever. I'm like, I'm like, wait, so, so did, like, Dick's not wearing a disguise or anything. I'm like, so the CBI knows Dick Grayson is Nightwing? I guess, well, part of, one of the things I think that's such an... Or do they just not care? It, yeah, well, they refer to each other as Dick and Roy all the time. Yeah. In the, in these issues, so... Unless they, unless they think that's an alias, they're like, yeah, who calls himself Dick anymore? That's an, such an old-fashioned name. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. But I mean, I mean, they 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 can see his face. I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be that hard to put two and two together? Yeah. But yeah, and then uh, that Sepulva, who, uh, yeah, I guess Roy never got along with. Um, he uh, sets them up. Yep. Like they're trying to. Uh, yeah, I wonder if uh, Marv just set up the first couple issues of this this story because yeah. By the time you get to the one issue, yeah, it just says that Sherry or Cherry Wilkerson. Yeah, because he's just yeah. yeah, and it's not that it's bad. I think they just it just gets too complicated with some of the Northern Ireland stuff. Yeah, and, and then all of then, a sudden, then all of a sudden you have to like shift abruptly to Washington D.C. It seems like yeah, yeah, pretty much because yeah, they're. Yeah, they're in Washington, D.C., and they get in the, the last one. They're like, "Come with us!" Oh no, wait. Yeah, come with us. 
Yeah, you're right. They are, are, are taken while they're just regular looking, and then they pop out with their outfits. Okay, yeah, the Santas are for Ireland's freedom. That dude picks them up again, and then it's like, you're both under arrest. That's how the second one ends. You're like, wait, what's gonna happen? And then somebody from the CBI comes out and is like, oh, hey, dudes. You guys are coming with us. We know wait. who's behind... We know Sepulveda's involved with the drug shipments, but we don't know who's behind him. So it's, and so Dick it's, and Roy are like, oh, yeah, we know who that is. It's Lord Danvers. So then, boom, it's, it's solved. <laughs> So in some of these issues, did they get, quote, unquote, two chapters? Because in this story, it seems like it goes up to, like, nine chapters, but there wasn't, like, nine issues for this story. Oh, yeah, that's right. There was one. There is a couple where they get two chapters. You're right. So, again, I wonder if there was the, them, you know, they were running out of room, running out of issues, so they had to get the story done, or or maybe somebody, yeah. or maybe somebody else wasn't ready, you know, for something coming up. So they're like, yeah, we'll just put two you know you guys have all your stuff done we'll just put two oh yeah yeah there's chapters wait what was it maybe the first one is chapters two. oh yeah there's chapters one and two in the first one okay yeah 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 that makes sense because it's like nine chapters but eight issues yeah okay but yeah, it's it's like the it's like it's like the whole thing in Ireland. But then at the end, it turned you know it's like you know thirty spies and you know like that Sepola gets taken in and Lord Danvers because if it's if it's politics, it's one thing. But then it seems like they were doing the whole thing with with you know everything going on in Ireland, and all of a sudden it abruptly shifts and and goes to like oh we got corrupt uh, you know spy you know this head of the spy organization and this lord danvers and it's like all of a sudden yeah. you just like drop the politics and it's just like a spy thing it's like what yes yeah because that's how they end it is like oh we need to know who's the dude yeah. who is uh now i can't find where it was that he was trying to explain how he broke up with bruce was that in the I thought that was in the second story. Was it at the end of the first one? Like I said, I don't remember. Here, maybe I'll, I'll try flicking through here. But yeah, it's hard for me to remember because I just got the uh, trade digitally yeah. and I just read the whole thing at one time. So it all kind of blurs to me. Yeah. It's in there. I mean, if it's in the second one, it's probably in that first, first issue or so. Because yeah, in the middle, there's a lot of Roy, just Roy in the middle. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that's the big thing it, that makes it feel weird is it's like so much with the Northern Ireland stuff and then boom, it's just... I, I mean, I mean <laughs> either story would have been good, but it just seems like, yeah, all the, it, it, the Ireland stuff just abruptly gets dropped and it's like, you know, except for like the girls, it's like, yeah, not, it's yeah. like not br brought up again except for like, oh yeah, these two shady guys were... Oh, right. Sorry. It's in the very first one. I remembered it. It's in the first one of the first story. Okay. So, yeah. Six, yeah. Sorry. Because uh, when Roy's talking about, yeah, I was fired. Oh, yeah. Where they're talking about, yeah, the same page where he's taking his stuff out of the, wa of the washing machine. Uh, and he's like, we're similar and different. You're outgoing. I'm far quieter. They're like, yeah, but we've both been wards of millionaires, and we were rejected fired by them. Dick says, hey, I wasn't fired by Batman. I quit. I'm sorry, Dick. I heard he let you go, then hired some kid to take your place. That's not the full story, Roy. Hell, I was almost out before we began fighting. I'd gone off to college, quit, came back, joined the Titans. I wasn't robbing any longer. I had to be my uh -huh. own. I think Batman knew it, too. Fact is, Roy, ever since his parents were killed, he's had a problem with rejection. Batman knew I wanted to leave. I think he began fighting with me to make my leaving easier. That way, he could reject me before I rejected him. You know, you know what confused me about that too. In the trade, if you if you get the uh, old friends, new enemies trade, yeah, in the beginning, before the action comics issue, you get the Nightwing story from Secret Origins thirteen. Oh, and okay. In that, and in that one, they show him handing the suit to Jason. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, which that doesn't preclude that happening here, and actually. Interesting. I wonder if he remembered it. I mean, because he wrote it, but I was just putting comics away, and I got out the Robin 80th Spectacular that was not the the one that had the, the like, $10 one. Yeah. And, you know, there's that first one that Wolfman wrote that was the nudge, which is basically what happened here. Like, Bruce was kind of being a little bit of a jerk. 
And his thinking was like, I'm nudging Dick out of the nest. And he's like, I gotta leave. And it goes off. So, it actually, Marv has, um, I think Marv has, like, pretty consistently hmm. still followed his version that he originally wrote, which is yeah. the somewhat less angsty version. And then Dick says, I didn't say anything because I care for Bruce more than almost anyone. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, but and, and Roy says, that's how it happens. He says, at least from my point of view, Batman might say something altogether different. <laughs> but the, the second one ends almost like the first one ends. I mean, uh, Roy and, uh, while Dick and Roy are sitting there playing with Leanne, uh, Corey's sitting there too. Yep. Yes, it has a nice ornate. Yeah, the art's not quite as good at the end of that one. And Danvers ended up getting in trouble after all. Yep. So everyone's good. The end. Yep. That's a wrap. Uh, oh gosh. Why can't I seem to zoom in on this? Uh, I don't know that I don't I don't like the Kindle uh, interface, at least on this on the computer as much as, like, uh, DC Universe or the Marvel Unlimited stuff. Uh, oh, so you didn't get it through Comixology? You had to get it through no, Kindle? No, uh, yeah, I got, yeah, I got, like, you can get it on, you have to buy it, yeah, you have to get it through the Kindle, I guess, like, um, but you can, uh, oh, I guess I could open it, because I think, yeah, you, like, you can link the Comixology uh, thing, but maybe that, yeah, maybe yeah. that would have been better. Yeah, I just uh, downloaded the Kindle app for this computer, but. Fair enough. But yeah, like I said, DC Universe, they, I think they had some of the... I don't think they... I don't know if they even had all the issues for the first story, but they had, like, some of them. Oh, did they? I wasn't even sure if they had Action Comics Weekly on there. They did. They had a few. Like, I think they had 613, and I think they might have had, a f like, one or two for, for the second story. But yeah, they didn't have, a lo like, all of them, so... Yeah, yeah, it's good to sort it by... Uh... Like I said, yeah, if you want to find the, the complete uh, story for both of these, yeah, uh... Nightwing, uh, old new old old friends, new enemies. Uh, like I said, it, I found it on Kindle digitally. Uh, it was um, Amazon. Amazon had uh, some uh, physical copies. So there you go. But it's a good one, particularly the first one. It's a good one because yeah, the first the first story it like it's less confusing. <laughs> but, but I know those are and it's a simple like thwarting Cheshire, but also Roy getting his daughter back. Yeah. I mean, I know you're, I know they're probably your dad's comics, but I'm jealous. Of, I, I would love to have like a complete run of the uh, Action Comics Weekly issues. Like I only have one issue of Action Comics Weekly, and it's not it. There's it's no, actually, these ones are mine. I bought that off eBay. I think when I got back into comics, because the only Action Comics Weekly I have are these ones yeah. we just read. I just have those. I think I only have. I think I only have one issue, and it, it's none of. They're none of the Nightwing stuff. So yeah. Because I was thinking yeah. about buying them, but then I, that's, I saw this trade. It was still cheaper to get it in this trade than get it the individual issues. Oh, yeah, definitely. <sighs> All right. So anything else on this one? I think that's it. It's a pretty good one. Yep. Yes, it is. Highly recommend. Uh, just pulling up the schedule here for the rest of the month of January. All right. Let's see. So... Like I said, you know, Kristen kept bringing up the Death in the Family uh, ads. Lilith and I are going to be covering that. So, oh, if you're listening to this on the podcast, yeah, I'm, uh, coming up on uh, Monday after this. Yeah, Death in the Family. So, how's that for timing? Uh, <laughs> Pretty good. See, we got gotcha. you. All right. Oh, next week, Action Comics uh, 771. So no weekly to it, just yes. action. It's a regular <laughs> action comics issue, yes. It's, so it's a Superman Nightwing team up, uh, I believe from the early 2000s. Uh, then we get, oh, Superman 700. Yeah, which really we're only concerned with one. Yes, uh, the, well, the, the, yeah, yeah, the, uh, Bat, uh, Batman, Superman's yeah. team up with a young Dick Grayson, yes. Uh, then to tie up the month, Grayson annual number two, another, uh, Dick Grayson Superman team up so rocking so see what I kind of did I mean, there's actually no Superman in this you would think Action Comics but it's Action Comics Weekly well, I was gonna say, but it's Dick and Roy which is fun I was going to say yeah Superman was technically in these issues but not in the Nightwing story yeah right yeah so I, I was going to say if you get the individual issues yeah you'll get some Superman but yeah not right, with yes. not with Dick Grayson alright 
So should we get out of here? Yep. I think we've said all there is to say. Oh, yeah. All right, everyone. So, yes, that, there's your uh, homework. Action Comics 771, Superman 700, and Grayson Annual 2. Those all have uh, Dick Grayson and Superman. So uh, send your thoughts on all of those. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com, or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. And remember to follow Nightwing News on Facebook, Twitter, uh, we have our Bloodhaven Bulletin, the face, the uh, Nightwing fan group so on Facebook, so go check that out. Uh, you can watch this video on YouTube, find links to everything we do all in one place. That's linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And remember to support our sponsors, Tweaked Audio and Hunt a Killer. Uh, use the code Southgate for both of those for a handy discount. And for those of you who love the read, which should be all of you, uh, pick up Pod Life the book now in digital and paperback, uh, volume one. Uh, learn the ins and outs of podcasting. And if that is not enough, go go on Amazon and pick up Dick Grayson, Boy Wonder. If you're a fan of Nightwing, yes, you will love that book. If you're a fan of anything Dick Grayson, you'll love that book. And when you're on Amazon to get that. Use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Help us support this show, the Southgate Media Group Network, and that international man of mystery, Rob Master Doom Southgate. Make it rain, so says Master Doom. Your weak sauce. Why did your eye drift over to my box? And Kristen has no plugs because she doesn't need to. She put together Dick Grace and Boy Wonder, so. Phil's the official Phil's the official hype man. Oh please, everyone else I work with their own hype machine. This one's like hey, I'm good. Alright everyone. So yes. 2021 opens with a bang. Come back next time for Action 771. Nightwing, Superman, Inter Inter Gang? I believe it's also guest written by Chuck Dixon, so yeah, it's, it's around the time he's right Nightwing, so. We'll find out. So if you like that, uh, that uh, late 90s Nightwing, yeah, I don't like this issue. And again, send your thoughts, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Alright, everyone. Once again, join us next time. Same wing time! Same wing channel! The Nightwing News! The Nightwing News! 